Hi everyone, Peter here from Flow High Performance, and in this video, we'll be covering how light weights can be used to induce muscle hypertrophy. Before we explore the mechanisms behind this idea, we need to first establish if lifting light weights can in fact be effective for muscle hypertrophy. It is a common conception that lifting weights in the 6 to 12 rep range is the sweet spot for hypertrophy training, and that loads used in a higher rep range simply induce muscle endurance adaptations. However, this meta-analysis published in 2017 gave conclusive evidence against this idea. The study found that although maximal strength gains were far superior when using heavier loads, using loads of less than 60% 1RM induced equal hypertrophy adaptations compared with loads of greater than 60% 1RM. An important factor to consider with this meta-analysis is that all the studies included compared training methods with all sets taken to failure for both the high and low load groups. So how exactly can lighter weights stimulate muscle hypertrophy equally well to those of heavier loads? To answer this question, we need to understand the size principle of motor unit recruitment. The size principle refers to the concept of what order muscle fibers are recruited. Essentially, we have a range of muscle fibers in each muscle from smaller and weaker fibers to bigger and stronger fibers. The smaller muscle fibers are generally weaker but have better endurance, while the larger fibers are stronger but can only produce force for a short period of time before they fatigue. If we don't need much strength in an exercise, then only the smaller muscle fibers will be recruited because they are capable of doing so. However, if the smaller fibers aren't strong enough to perform the task, then the larger fibers also need to be recruited to assist. The smaller muscle fibers will always be recruited first, and the larger fibers will only be recruited if the exercise demands it. So when we lift a fairly heavy weight, say in the rep ranges of 10 and below, we essentially use all our muscle fibers from the first rep. This is because if we don't use all our muscle fibers, then we simply cannot lift the load because it's heavy. However, if the loads are lighter, say in the rep ranges of 15 to 20, then only the smaller muscle fibers will be recruited initially, since the load is lighter. However, as the set progresses and the muscles begin to fatigue, then the smaller fibers can no longer lift the weight alone. The larger fibers then need to be recruited too to lift the weight. The closer and closer to failure the set is taken, the more and more muscle fibers will be recruited. Eventually, all fibers will be recruited and they essentially receive a similar hypertrophy stimulus to when the loads are heavier. So what benefit can lifting lighter loads bring to someone's training? First of all, Lighter loads may be able to stimulate hypertrophy equally as well as heavier loads, although maximal strength is certainly superior with heavier loads. So if the trainee has a simultaneous goal of increasing strength, then lighter load hypertrophy training may not be the best choice. The main benefit lighter loads have for trainees who solely want to focus on hypertrophy training is that it can achieve a hypertrophy stimulus without taxing the joints as much. This is an important consideration for advanced trainees or those who wish to perform resistance training for a long period of time because most well-trained individuals know that certain exercises irritate their joints if performed with a certain technique or if performed with too heavy of loads. Using higher reps with lighter weights may allow someone to perform a certain exercise without pain. Furthermore, Higher reps can provide a variation to monotonous training, giving a new stimulus for the trainee to adapt to. This can be done in a long-term sense or within the same session. For example, an individual upper body pressing session may use a rep range of 6 to 12 for the compound lifts like bench press and overhead press, and a rep range of 12 to 20 for accessory exercises like chest and tricep isolation exercises. From a long-term point of view, compound lifts may cycle through blocks of different rep ranges over time to provide a novel training stimulus. For example, 
the bench press can be performed in the 6 to 10 rep range for 2 to 3 months, in the 8 to 12 rep range for 2 to 3 months, and then in the 12 to 15 rep range for 2 to 3 months. So what does this practically mean for trainees seeking hypertrophy? The first point is that volume should be calculated via total number of sets for a given muscle group, rather than the classic sets times reps times load method. This is because hypertrophy can be achieved over a range of different rep ranges and each hard set essentially achieves a similar adaptation. The second point is that when using higher rep ranges with lighter loads, it is important to take these sets close to failure, at least three reps before failure. This is necessary to ensure that all the muscle fibers are recruited by the end of the set in order to actually be taxed by the exercise. And the last practical application is that lighter loads can be used for trainees with joint issues during resistance training as previously mentioned. This gives more options for trainees to train with and find methods that don't cause injury. Thanks for watching and hopefully you got something out of this video. Remember to subscribe if you haven't already.